Hello everyone and welcome to Namur for another course pre-ride video. Today we ride on board with Jens Adams from the Hollebeek Hoeve team as he takes us a lap along a very brutal parkour in Namur. The first corner after the finish is a 180 degree corner but that is not where the start is. The finish straight is already so short it should not be allowed to host the finish by UCI regulations. Nevertheless they do, but they were smart enough to think that it would not be possible to have a safe start there, so they moved the start to a place we will pass very soon. It's only one of few races that has separate start and finish straights in Amur, but it's definitely necessary considering the shortness of the finish straight. We are currently in the first pit zone, and that is where most riders will be making their bike changes. It's much faster to change on this side than on the other side. If we come out of the pits, there's a very challenging corner. We go from gravel to tarmac. There's a bit of a short bump in the corner and it's pretty narrow at the exit. We saw plenty of riders flirting with the barriers there throughout the race, especially considering the lack of grip that you have on cyclocross tires on tarmac, especially at the slightly higher speed there. We just part the start section there at that cobbled part. That is where the start section joins the main course. The start section was on the cobbles on the left hand side there and slingshots you up to this massive climb towards the citadel of Namur. As you can see it has been raining a bit over the past couple of weeks and that has made the parkour a bit muddy. No thick mud today but the mud here does make the parkour even more draining for the riders their legs than if it was dry. It's about a 30 to 40 second effort this climb as we come towards the top which is a bridge and this is a tough one. You don't really see climbs as long as this, maybe outside of the Koppenberg and earlier of course you also had a Ronse, but that cross is no longer around. Jens just comes towards the top and he adjusts his camera which got a bit of a buff in the pits, but now we can see it in front of him again and that's perfect. This climb has a bit of a false flat and then a flat top and this is one of the few parts where you can get some relative recovery. In Namur there's not a lot of places where you can recover because the downhills are super challenging. Here you have one again, you can rest the legs a bit, but you come in towards the most iconic corner of Namur, this 180 degree corner which goes uphill again, and it's again here you can see a bit muddy, a bit slippery, which makes it a bit more draining for the rider's legs to go up here, and it really forces you to put down the power if you want to make it to the top here. This uphill is followed by a downhill which is made out of two parts. The first part has a couple of steep banks and the second part has a bit of faster corners which follow each other in a nice flow. But this part here is also challenging because there are some roots of some trees which makes it make it extra challenging. This is the steepest bank here and we saw a crash of stone arts here in that rut as it got deeper and deeper throughout the rest of the day. Here a 180 degree corner to slow the riders down to give the sponsor some extra airtime on TV. Not entirely a fan of those but I can see the commercial value of those corners there and here we are into the faster part of the downhill. As you can see there's quite some spectators already alongside this course as Jens is doing his course practice and that is also what Namur is known for. It's known for having massive crowds and the race here didn't disappoint again. They even said it was a record amount of spectators for Namur there which was quite special in these Covid times but nevertheless the atmosphere was great and the parkour is also great to watch on TV sometimes a bit difficult to see what is happening if you are on site but nevertheless it's spectacular to see if you are standing in the downhill or near the off camera we're currently passing the second pit zone not many riders changed their bikes there as it was a lot slower than changing on the other side after the pits we come into another section that slows the riders down to put the XTO bot camera sponsors in a good daylight and following that we go on to the real part which we know Namur for. It starts with the stairs which is challenging because you need to hop off on tarmac and it's easy to slid through there if you do are racing on your shoes which these riders do then it's very difficult if you race yourself you probably know that you don't have much grip on tarmac. The bridge sends you into the downhill 
which Namuru is known for. This is such a tricky downhill. There are a lot of roots of trees here. It's super slippery as well. Maybe not as slippery as two years ago, but still the mud has made it even more challenging. It's not wide, so there's no room for error. And it's just super, super challenging, especially this part here. It's just, it requires full focus if you want to make it down here. And you need a lot of courage to really send it into that rut there at the bottom. When you've reached that, it goes uphill towards the bit of the section where the off camber was last year. The off camber this year has moved higher and we are now going to go downhill on this off camber bit before we go into the new downhill. Here we go on to a bit of an off camber, it's a short one. What I did find weird was that there was no safety zone because on the other side, we'll pass there, there's the big off camber. And it's easy if you slid under the nets there that you come into this side of the parkour. This part of the off camber is challenging, but it's not the hardest. We saw riders opt to run this part, this corner because it got too slippery. In the early races of the day, it was still possible to ride the corner there, but all the grass got taken away by the junior, junior woman and men's under 23 race, so there was nothing left. Then we come towards the new downhill here, and that one, no grass left there whatsoever. It's more sending it down and hoping it sticks. You can see a rider taking the right hand side there, that was the way to go if you wanted to ride it. The left side here, we can see it with the ends, no grip at all, and you just slid out. It sends you up towards this cobbled climb here, and this is another tough feature that got added a couple of years ago, which makes the course even more challenging for the riders. More elevation, cobbles that are in a pretty bad condition, certainly not something you would be riding for fun. This uphill will eventually lead us towards the off-camber. The off-camber this year has been moved higher because they thought the lower off-camber they had last year had gotten too easy because there was a big rut there which you could use. I do agree that it wasn't as challenging as a couple of seasons ago, but I do not know if the way that they went this year is the way to go. It's very challenging, you'll see it soon when Jens tried it. There was no grass left, it was super slippery. Yes, it did remind me of the early times that the off-camber was introduced, but then again, is this the way to go? In my opinion, it was too narrow. It was just three, three and a half meters wide. There was a safety zone for spectators, making it hard for them to see. So, I don't know, I have a bit of a mixed feeling about this off-camber. But we can see that the off-camber does provide us with a lot of difficulties, or at least for the riders. It's very tough. We can see Jens actually making it through to the end, sending it through the off-camber, which is pretty impressive. Throughout the men's race, we saw that most riders needed to hop off towards the end because the women's category had completely destroyed any grip that was left there. That also meant that this corner here, which Jens is able to ride onto an uphill, is more difficult to ride, or that's why it was run, I must say. Jens is still able to power it up. We saw juniors powering this up as well. But then again, the course involved by having four categories race over it before the men's race. The same goes for the steep climb you can see there in the back. In the early phase of the day, there were still riders almost making it to the top. But because so many riders walked in this rut, which is the only way you can make it up, there was just no way you could make it to the top here. I would like the would like to briefly come back towards that off-camber as you can have another send it downhill here. This is again sending it, hoping you don't get catapulted into the barriers like what happened with Dupont. But I feel like the off-camber, you had that first part of the off-camber which led into the downhill. There should have been a safety zone there because that could have gotten nasty. We already saw that these poles weren't put in the ground properly during the juniors race when riders crashed into them and basically the course was falling apart then, but luckily they fixed that for the men's race. The steep downhill is followed by a bit of a longer downhill as we come towards the end of the lap. This is the last main feature of the climb and it's a corner followed by an uphill which was running and then under the bridge you will hop on coming towards the end of a lap of Namur. But this was a run up, if it would have been dry it might have been possible to ride up a fair bit of the climb as we saw a couple of years ago but for this year certainly no way you could make it up especially after all other categories had basically made it a wall with climbing steps. So under the bridge you hop on and then we come towards the final corner already of Namur. That's here it's a left hander which has a bit of a sling back towards the finish and that is also why you can see that they didn't put the start here. Despite some flaws that could have easily been avoided by some proper course designing, 
it is still one of the most beautiful races on the calendar and definitely one of the most brutal as well. Thanks for watching, make sure to share it and leave a like. Goodbye.